Hey again, everybody. Today I am doing another new Photoshop tutorial because it came to my attention recently that a lot of you are trying to use Photoshop to set up social media graphics um, or quotes or just um, little graphic text um, images. And even though Photoshop is not the best program to use for that situation, I understand that a lot of you only have access to um, Photoshop. So I'm gonna do a quick tutorial about how to kind of manipulate text and create those um, little graphic quotes so you can use Photoshop if you need to. So let's just make a new document. And when I'm working or creating social media, I usually do a square post because that seems to work the best over, um, like, because I mainly use Facebook and Instagram and square, but you can make it any size you want depending on what platform you're posting to. I'll just use square as an example. And of course my computer's being really slow because I don't want it to be. Okay, so let's do... Switch my size here. I'm going to do, just to be safe, a thousand by a thousand. And 72 is fine. RGB, that's great. Actually, I want a transparent background. So I'm going to hit create. Oh my gosh, for slowness this morning. I must have too many things open. Okay, so here is my artboard for my social media graphic. And of course, you probably have a, a layout in mind already. Um, if you're going to copy brand colors or specific colors, don't mind my use of colors. But let's just go with, I'll just go with my colors, which is black. So first, in order to get a background color, I want to get my layers up here first. Um, so I have a layer one and it's transparent and I am going to go ahead and go up to edit and I'm going to do a fill and I'm going to choose black. Now if you had a custom, your own custom brand color or whatever, um, you could plug it in here and use it. Oh, I have a tint. So let's do that again. Edit, fill, black, and I, not 20%. I want to do 100%. And for the sake of keeping my layers um, easily organized, I'm going to double click on layer one and call it black background. So I know that that's what that layer has on it. Now, as far as text, you are going to go to your text tool. And there is two ways that you can do text. If you just click once on your artboard and you start typing, um, Aaron is the best. You know what? Let me switch that color. I'm going to, I did a little typing and up here on the top of your toolbar is your text color. So right now it's black against my black background, so I can't see it, but I'm going to select it and then I'm going to hit my text color. This down here is not your text color, so don't use that. Use this up here in your, when you're on your text tool, your palette up here changes to your text tools. So let's change our text color and we're going to go white. So now we can see it. And I'm still on my text tool. I'm going to click back at the end here. Erin is the best graphic designer and she knows a lot about Illustrator and Photoshop. Okay, so as you can see, when I just did the single click and I continue to type, it just keeps typing. I'll show you just typing a bunch of stuff here. It just keeps typing in a long line, which sometimes is ideal and sometimes it's not. So if I go to my move, my arrow tool, I can move this around like this. It stays. It stays all in one line, and if you look over at your text layer, you can tell that it's text because it has a T as the thumbnail, so that's a text layer. 
But sometimes, like when I'm doing social media quotes, a lot of times I will just be copying and pasting a quote that I found. So in that case, when you have a long string of text that you eventually want to format, I'm going to show you another way. So I'm going to click on the text that I already typed and I'm going to do a control A to select it all. I'm going to do a control C to copy it and I'm going to do a control X to delete it. And I'm going to go to my arrow tool to clear that out. And I need to just move this palette over because it's bugging me. Okay, so back to your text tool. This time, instead of just clicking once and typing, we're going to click in the upper corner and we're going to drag. And you can see it's creating a box and it's creating a text box. So now we're typing within the shape that we just created. We clicked and dragged and it's creating a text box. So now if I paste in that text that I typed, now it's going to stay within this box. And as long as you're on the text tool, this box will stay here and you can see it. And if you click on these boxes, you can drag and it will kind of restring your text as you drag. And then when you click off the text tool and do something else, your box goes away and you can click here and you can move it around. However, if you go back to your text tool and you click on your text, your box reappears again. So let's do, um, I'm trying to think of a quote offhand. Today is the best day ever. Oh, I want to keep it as a string. Always be, always choose kindness. Two of my favorite statements. Okay. <coughs> so, if we wanted to just keep this text all the same size and kind of string it, just like a quote, we could move our box in so that that second sentence drops to a second line. And then we can drag this bottom up. Now, here's the cool part. If we click onto our arrow, so we're not on our text tool, and then we go to an edit. Let's do a free transform. Our sizing box comes up, and if you click in the corner and hold your shift key down, then we can make this text big. And double click on your text to set it. We're still on the arrow, and then you can move this around. Cool. Hopefully that helps. Okay, now let's say that we wanted to do a little bit more formatting with this text because it's kind of boring. So we could go back to our text tool, and we're going to bring our character palette up, which is right here. That gives us all of our text tools. And I want to, first let's change the font. So we're going to select our font. Actually, let's just change the font of one piece. Let's do best. And let's make that kind of like a fun, scripty font. There we go. I like that one. Okay, but if we click off of here, you can see that it's kind of small and kind of gets lost in there. So let's make it bigger. We're going to select just the, those four letters. And over here in our character palette, this is your text size. So if you click on the T's and you drag to the right, it's increasing its size. And if you drag to the left, it's making it smaller. Drag to the right, it makes it bigger. So let's do that. And also you can type in numbers in this box too, but I think it's easier just to click and drag. The best, and then let's do the same thing to the word 
kindness. So that was brave heart regular, I think. No, there. Yep, brave love. And again, it's kind of small, so we're going to click on our text tool here, set the font size. We're going to click, and then we're going to drag to the right until it gets bigger. And I want to say that other one was 99, so we'll take it to 99. So there's that. And let's see, here's another cool trick. If you are on your arrow tool and go to edit, free transform again. Um, clicking and dragging the arrows out will increase or decrease. Or if you hover on your corner here, you can see your arrow turns to like a curved, um, curved line with two arrows. That means if you click and you start to rotate, you can rotate it any way you want. So that's a cool trick. Um, if you want to change the color, let's change the color of just that word best. You would just, um, when you are on your text tool again, because you have to be on your text tool in order to highlight or edit the text, you're going to select that. And then remember, your text color is up here. It's not down here like everything else. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to click on white, and we're going to make it Red. There. Okay. And then we're going to do the same thing with that. Okay, now see how your text right here is now back at white. But we want the same red. So we're going to click on our white again because we're going to change it. And then see how your cursor changes to a little eyedropper? On here, it's a circle. If you move off, it's an eyedropper. So now we can go to this red and we can suck up this color. Just click on it. And now you have the same red. So you can hit OK. There we go. So we're starting to get somewhere. And let's just check out our layer palette so we can see what's going on here. So this is our layer with all of our text on it. This layer is the layer that we started with and deleted when we were just doing one long string of text, so I can delete that. And then here's our black background, which we can change at any time. Maybe you want to put a photo in the background. That works too. One other thing I think that people use a lot in social media graphics and is a little bit tricky to figure out how to do in Photoshop is to make a line or a like an outline box so I'm gonna go over that quickly too let's do a, a white box around the outside in order to do that um, we are going to first let's put it on a new layer so that it's movable in case um, we want to change it later so let's do a new layer and let's call it white box then we're going to use our rectangle tool here. We're going to, it's right below the arrow. We're going to click on that. And then we're going to click. And I'm going to hold my shift key down so it keeps a perfect square. Because our image is perfectly square. And it looks pretty even. So now we have these dancing lines. And this is our box. Now instead of doing a fill like we did for the background, you're going to go up to edit. And you're going to do a stroke. So the first time we did a fill, and that will fill your entire shape with a certain color. Or you can just do a stroke. So let's do stroke. And right here is where you tell it how wide. And sometimes it takes a little trial and error figuring out how thick you want your border. So we're going to just start with, let's do five pixels. And we don't want it black, we want it white. So we're going to change that color. And you can have the... Um, have it stroke the outside of your selection. You can have it center it within your selection or inside. So play around with those two. In this case, we could do any of the three and it would look fine because it's only five pixels. So you're not going to see a whole lot of difference, but um, let's just keep it centered. So you'll probably have three pixels on the outside of the line and two pixels on the inside. And we're going to keep the mode normal, and we're going to keep the opacity at 100%. So hit OK. 
and there's our white box and if we zoom in you can see what I was saying about the inside or the outside of the selection it looks like there's two pixels on the outside and three pixels on the inside if you would have chosen outside this part would start here at the selection and it would be out here so and because we chose to put it on its own layer over here the white box you can turn that off and on and you can do a control or an apple d to deselect to stop your selection there so now we can turn it on and off and you can decide if you want it or not um, okay so let's do a line now so let's make a new layer and we're going to call it white line and you're going to go back to your rectangle tool and we're going to let's say we want to underline this word actually let's put a, a line at the top and the bottom so we're going to turn off our white box because if we leave that on that'll be too much lines but okay so we're going to do a line underneath so we're going to draw a really skinny rectangle it's probably a little thick but um, and then we're going to go up to edit and we're going to fill you would think that you would stroke because that's what you would do in any other program to make a line but in Photoshop it's different you have to draw a skinny rectangle and then do fill and this time we're going to fill it with white 100% OK and if we do a control D to get rid of our selection there we have a line and the easiest way instead of trying to go up here and draw the exact same size line which could take you multiple tries trust me I've done it I figured out the easiest way is to just if you click on your white line layer over here and you go up to the top and you do a duplicate means make a copy of this layer duplicate the layer and we're gonna put white line top now you have you know what we're gonna name this one bottom so we can keep them straight so now if you go on use your arrow tool because we're gonna move it when you duplicate a layer it will duplicate it right on top of the other one so use your arrow tool click on your line and move it up and now you have two that are the exact same size thickness length makes it easy peasy so hopefully this helps um, I feel like those are the three main things that you would need to make social media graphics text lines and an outline box are the three most common things I see if there's something else you're having trouble with just of course shout out let me know um, and I can walk you through it if you need me to I can't wait to see all your pretty quotes and graphics have a fantastic day